obviously for St. Mary's, but we were all there in Spokane. The Gales played Gonzaga real tough. Now trying to do it on their home floor where they have been unbeatable this season. I, I would anticipate first possession. Number two is going to get a touch on the block. Yeah, see if he can't get that positive feeling going for Timmy. He tried to feed Chad Holmgren and had his pass stolen away. Well, Kevin Bowen got a hand on it. He's been an incredible defensive player for the Gales. And the guy with the ball has been an incredible offensive player for St. Mary's, especially in recent weeks. Tommy Cousy gets the first bucket of the night. Yeah, no, Tommy, he's been on fire, averaging 17 points per game over the last six. Well, there's your Timmy touch, and I think that's what Molly was talking about. Yeah. Toss is happy if those are the shots that Timmy's taking. It forced him into the mid-range. You don't want to allow him to bury you, in particular in transition, deep in the paint where he can roll and go off of either shoulder. Kuzi into the lane. They call him for a travel. That's a Gales turnover. One thing about Kuzi in Spokane, Chad Holmgren has been an eraser at yeah. the defensive end for Gonzaga, but Kuzi was not afraid to go inside, had some success going inside. So the Zags, Holmgren will put it on the floor, and the ball is stolen away by Logan Johnson. Two on one, Dukas gets it back, lays it in. What a start for St. Mary's. Here's Strother, runner, no. Gales don't run a lot, but they will when they have the opportunity. And that was a great execution. I'm more impressed with the detail at the defensive end of the floor. And one of the best defensive teams in college basketball. Kuzi, that time, was not going to challenge Holmgren. And St. Mary's will reset. Holmgren matched up against Kuzi. He takes it right past him. And another bucket for the senior. St. Mary's has the first six. Timmy draws a foul. Dave, let's go back a couple possessions ago. Defensively, they talked about it. Chet Holmgren likes to spin, and when he spins, you've got to be aggressive and attack it. Logan Johnson timed it absolutely perfectly and then delivered the assist at the other end of the floor. You know, they're so well-schooled defensively, St. Mary's is. They always have been under Randy Bennett. And this year, they got Bowen, they've got Logan. They've got some individual defenders, too, who can be very disruptive. Alex Dukas did a great job defending Julian Strother on that out-of-bounds underneath. Didn't allow him to get into the action that they wanted to. Now Andrew Nemhard, Gonzaga. Not often they go this deep into a game without scoring. Nemhard came up short. Had a good look. Toss against the shot blocker Holmgren. Toss with the left hand. What a start for St. Mary's. They're getting everything they want. They're the team that looks very comfortable at the offensive end of the floor right now. It's been a wild day in college basketball. Who knows? Maybe we're going to cap it off. Nemhard, three. Good. How good has he become with it? Feeling comfortable for that step back shot. We saw it on the first possession of both halves at San Francisco on Thursday night. But that time, that little step back create that space. A real nice, clean look in rhythm. Hard screen from Bowen on Bolton, who's got the matchup with Kuzi this time. Bolton trying to hound him. Kuzi, it's just incredible the breakout performance he's had these last few weeks. At the end of his career, Toss, Bolton flopped. Toss missed the layup, got his own miss, and puts it back in. And they're going to call them, I think they call the flop warning. They, they are. are. Yeah. I think it's a good call. It's a great call. And Toss did an excellent job making sure he's not lowering his shoulder, just utilizing his size against a smaller player. I mean, when you, when you make that kind of move, I mean, you're, you're just diving to the floor there. And it's worth the try, by the way, if you're Rashir Bolton. He wasn't going to stop him at that point. But now he's been warned. Them hard into the lane. 
This is not where you want Drew Timmy getting the ball. No. Help came, though. That was pretty good help side defense. Logan Johnson, explosive athlete. Johnson got by Holmgren but couldn't finish. Timmy on the move, no whistle. And now they're calling a flop warning against Toss. And that'll send us to our first timeout. We're going to keep it here with 15:38 on the clock, first half. On offense for Gonzaga, St. Mary's though top 10 points per game defense in the country, and two coaches that literally for two decades have been going head to head. They know each other so well. They know their systems. Out of the timeout, Gonzaga a little full court press. We saw this the other night at San Francisco. They got some deflections and they kind of got some runouts that allowed some separation. Mark Few just trying to be disruptive right now against the Gales. They're, Gales are five of seven shooting so far in this game. Shot clock under 10. Alex Dukas against Julian Strother making his move. Dukas in and out. Toss. Offensive rebound, but they're calling a foul. A push off against Toss. So no putback. It'll be Gonzaga basketball. All 10 of St. Mary's points have come in the paint. The paint is an area in which the Gonzaga Bulldogs consistently have dominated over the better part of the last decade. And this one-two punch of big men, Drew Timmy, Chet Holmgren, is the best in the country. Shot short, long rebound, tapped out Holmgren. They'll save it to Julian Strother. So second chance for the Zags. Timmy has destroyed St. Mary's in his Gonzaga career. Makes a little spin move here. They're making it tough on him in the early minutes tonight. Uh, Toss is doing a great job of rolling up. Molly McGrath said it in her opening comments about his mindset and how he wanted to defend. And he has held true to that so far early in this game. The key is how long can you sustain it? And that's often been the issue with teams that stay in early against Gonzaga as they, they get tired as it goes along. And Tommy Cousy for a player. St. Mary's is going to call a timeout after the May basket. For a player who started his career as a walk-on, he has just exploded in these last few weeks for the Gales. Off to a great start again. Get 12 to 3 on a day where being in the top 10 has not been a good thing. Uh, especially on the road. I mean, six AP top 10 teams have lost today, the most that we've seen in a single day. Arizona going down to Colorado. Number three, Auburn losing to Tennessee. Tennessee's home wins. Think about this. They have Arizona, Kentucky, and Auburn as home wins. Chad Holmgren swarmed in the lane, found a way to keep possession, and gets his first basket of the night for the Zags. But Dave, nothing has been easy for a team that has as good as flow and rhythm of any team in college basketball. I mean, th their offensive efficiency numbers are off the charts. The last three years, number one in the country. Kuzi got cut off there. Mitchell Saxon, young player, in for the Gales. Makes his move against Holmgren and scores with a foul. Wow. He didn't play much. That was I, big time. If Mitchell Saxon's going to be doing this, uh, we could have a... We could have a special night here in Moraga. I mean, that was a beautiful, controlled move. Utilize the shot blocker strengths against him to lift him in the air and then complete the three-point play He only averages about three points per game. Randy Bennett calls him the future Maybe the future is gonna be tonight Them hard to Timmy down low that help came quickly and left Bolton open and he knocks down the three That's the price you pay if you double team drew Timmy Well, you see the problem there is is where he caught the ball It was too deep in the paint and that's too long of a run and a dig To leave ball side the way that Tommy Cousy did because if you leave Bolton open, that's a layup Cousy so good on the screen and roll action them hard good defense there Gales will reset Logan Johnson. Johnson attacks, flipped it up. No. Rebound Gonzaga. Looking to run. Now a whistle, and they're going to call a foul. Defending Timmy Dallow. 
against Kyle Bowen. And Drew Timmy has been sensational in this matchup. He's yet to get going so far tonight. But you look at his numbers career-wise against the Gales. Uh, he always shows up. Uh, outside of one game his freshman year where he was limited to just eight minutes. He's averaging almost 18 points, shooting 78% from the field it's shocking he's 0 for 4 from the field to start this game Strother tough shot good he's had a monster breakout here Kuzi thought about taking that one in transition which is very uncharacteristic I think for St. Mary's there's no way you run with Gonzaga you've got to be patient you got to pick it and, and that was a better shot attempt right there by Tommy Kuzi than he would have got on that initial push isn't it amazing though Sean how many times you and I have seen Gonzaga this year as soon as Chet Holmgren leaves the game under the basket becomes a whole lot different against Gonzaga them hard falling away another tough shot for Andrew Nemard one of the best point guards in college basketball he kind of gets overshadowed on this Gonzaga team Saxon little shot fake with the left hand how about playing strong off a two a little shot fake no secondary help is coming extend out shield and protect and he played really good defense there against Timmy St. Mary's comes away with the ball. That's about as good as you could do. Here's Kuzi on the attack. Kuzi tip up. No. That was a rare, quicker shot. You want to limit possessions. You want to stay connected at the defensive end. Contest all shots. Make it tough. Contested too. You got to bring help right here. Tommy Kuzi cannot play against Drew Timmy one on one. Pass and the tip up after the wild shot from Watson. Strother gets it to go down. So he's off to a good start tonight. All the good that St. Mary's has done in the first nine minutes. They're only up five. Bowen passed up the three, goes to the bucket. Saxon offensive rebound, and they're going to call an offensive foul. This time he lowered his shoulder. Yeah. So the foul and the turnover for the Gales who will take a five-point lead into this timeout with 10.46 to go in half number one. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Support them. Obviously, your final season at Oregon, you were the face of college basketball overall, and you dealt with a lot of the pressure of being the face. This year, Gonzaga's big man, Chet Holmgren, yep. is the projected number one pick in the NBA draft. What advice would you give any of these stars on both teams on how to handle the pressure that they deal with? I think it would just be stay true to yourself. You know, there's so many outside pressures about going pro, where you're going to go, agents, you know, signing deals. I think at the end of the day, it's control what you can, you know, put one foot in front of the other, keep working hard and grinding and everything will take care of itself. You had a very special team at Oregon that had there been an NCAA tournament. I don't want to bring up. We would have won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> How do you, for, for this Gonzaga team that's been perfect throughout conference play and is the number one team in the country, as a player when you're going through that, knowing that every time you show up, you're the biggest target that they're going to have all season long. How do you yourself keep your team mentally dialed into that elite level? Yeah, um, every game's important. Everyone's coming and giving you their best chance, and I think at the end of the day, it makes you better, and it makes you prepared for those games where uh, it's one and done, and you can't mess up. You can't have an off day or, or you're out of the tournament. And so I think they have a target on their back, and they have to come out and be ready to play every single game. Long three from Alex Dukas missed. Under 10 minutes to go first half, and another... St. Mary's steal, so Gonzaga turns it over. Temple play. Gonzaga plays fast. St. Mary's plays slow. Okay. You're a player that thrives in the fast system. Yeah. How frustrating is it when you play fast, when you want to play fast, and the other team is more than comfortable taking a shot in the final third of the shot clock? You have to be able to play at their pace, but not let them dictate it. And so I think Gonzaga's doing a great job of just kind of staying true themselves, playing their basketball. But um, St. Mary's does a great job of sticking to what they know best and taking care of the ball and playing the way St. Mary's has always played. Great rotation that time. 
Sachs has come in and he has played extremely well, Dave Fleming. Kuzi and the Gales with the ball. Nice of Sabrina Ionescu to come join us here table side. Fotu drives on his senior night and couldn't quite finish. All the emotion of senior night, last regular season game. That ball goes out of bounds off of Andrew Nemhard. Sometimes I think that could be a distraction for players. Tonight, St. Mary's been super focused right from the start. Chet Holmgren will uh, back in the game. Drew Timmy's going to get a rest. Sabrina, a lot of news in women's college basketball. Paige Beckers came back for UConn last night. Uh, what? What's your thoughts on Paige and her return and what it could mean to UConn as we get closer to the NCAA tournament? Yeah, super happy to see her back and healthy. Um, saw she got a standing ovation when she subbed in. And she's the face of college basketball right now with a couple other players. And so it's really nice to see um, the run that they're going to have and how she's going to help. Great year on the women's side in the Pac-12. Super deep conference again. Mitchell Saxon trying to challenge Holmgren, who just swats it away and comes up with his own loose ball after the block shot. And now trying to take it all the way, got cut off. Great job pinching there because we've seen it a couple times where he gets that block shot and gets in the open floor, and he's going for a dunk. Strother from Holmgren, no. Saxon grabs a rebound. He's playing really well. It's a packed gym. What you, what's your thoughts? This gym is amazing. I've <laughs> right? never, I haven't seen it like this in a really long time. It's loud. It's hot. Fans feel like they're right on top of the yep. court. That's because they are. They are. Have you turned around? <laughs> <laughs> Bo two misses the three. So both teams quiet here the last couple times down the floor offensively. When you watch a game, what what are you looking at and observing from your point guard mindset? How they're reading the defense, um, I would just say, you know, definitely the reads off the pick and roll, but how they're also able to set up their teammates, get everyone involved, get them using their strengths, and how it's going to help them in this game against, you know, a good defensive team. Not many better at reading the defense than Andrew Nemhard. Got that last bucket for Gonzaga. Here's Logan Johnson's three. Go! And that is not a strength of Logan Johnson. A local product himself is his brother plays on Campos team. They just beat De La Salle last night. Kate Bennett, the son of Randy Bennett, plays on that team. They're going to the open division playoffs in high school. Nice lead pass. Jay Bones finishes with some contact. And Gonzaga's calling a timeout. Sabrina. Always great to catch up with you. Good Thank luck this you. season. Steph Dolson now with you at the Liberty. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And the Gales are the ones winning that battle right now, guys. Hey, that's mind-boggling, Molly. I mean, we've been around this Gonzaga program a ton, and we have seen them score in the paint against everybody that they've played against this season. They're minus 14 right now in points in the paint. And maybe a more impressive, too, is the Gales have kept them out of transition. Zero fast break points so far and you go back to what Randy Bennett was saying at shoot around today he said number one Value the ball only two turnovers so far for st. Mary's transition defense 90% of what they do is in transition in their on-ball motion They haven't had that usual rhythm and flow that we are used to seeing and then taking away the early post action They've done that. Uh, it's been a very impressive 14 minutes so far Right by St. Mary's. Yeah, Drew Timmy over five. Mitchell Saxon blocked it off of Nemard. It went off of Nemard's head out of bounds. It's going to be St. Mary's ball. Where okay, did this Mitchell Saxon you, come from? What did you say his nickname was? The future. The future is now. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is as good as he has ever played in the Gales uniform. And Randy Bennett's riding him. Tommy Cruzy, meanwhile, he's already in double figures. He's got 10, and that's the lead for St. Mary's with under six to go in the first half. Jimmy down low against Bowen, who just picked up his second foul. Wild miss, though. Drew Jimmy is out of sorts today. He really I is. Mean, he's, he's, he's trying to protect his shield so much that he's extending out further, and that's causing to change the angle on those shots. He's just kind of throwing it wildly. They're going to call that a shooting foul, I think. Logan Johnson going to the bucket. This is something. I mean, look, we got a long way to go. You got the most explosive team in the country in Gonzaga, but St. Mary's is taking it to him right now. 
And Dave, this is uh, I mean, pretty shocking to look at at the, at the beginning stages. And, and I think one of the things, that, especially on senior night, and the emotions are running a little bit hotter on senior night. Randy Bennett challenged his team. He said, listen, we've got plenty of games still ahead. The conference tournament, the NCAA tournament. We'll talk and honor our seniors later. Tonight, we'll have the ceremony. But, hey, younger guys, step up and show out for these guys. And, and Saxon has been the guy that has become the story here in the first half with his production off the bench and his rim protection. He's playing good defense on this possession. I mean, he is in the right spot. Bolton almost traveled. Kuzi blocks the shot. And Tommy Kuzi's going to track it down. Kuzi double team, split the double team, and then Saxon found Bowen wide open. No, Saxon offensive rebound. Put back. Dave, he averages three points a game. He's got seven. And he's doing it on both ends. This is a 10 nothing run for the Gales. Another Gonzaga turnover. St. Mary's wants to run. Gonzaga got back this time. Amazing. It's been this kind of day in college hoops. Johnson, wide open three. Ooh, not close. I mentioned it on the one they made earlier. That's not his strength. Jay Mullins steals it away. And he's going to lay it in with the left hand. And Mark Hughes calling another timeout. This place is bananas. We got a story developing here in Moraga. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Be frustrated. All of a sudden, it frees you up a little bit. And the numbers from February 12th versus the numbers tonight, uh, very different. And that's a big part of why 26 out of the 31 points that St. Mary's has has been in the paint. Holmgren from Timmy high low, and the seven foot freshman goes way above the rim to throw it down. We'll see if that ignites them a little bit and allows them to try to go on a run here before you get to the half. Stolen away. Nemhard comes away with a steal. It does feel like a big final three plus minutes on both sides. And if you're Gonzaga, you're trying to steal back some of that momentum, get into a rhythm at the offensive end of the floor, and that's not going to help. St. Mary's has done a great job of pinching and digging on any dribble penetration in the paint. I think they've been way more aggressive doing that here tonight than they did just a couple weeks ago in Spokane. I would agree. And maybe a little wrinkle in the defensive game plan. They talked about it a ton today at shoot around days. Holmgren comes away with a loose ball, goes behind the back with the dribble. <laughs> Bolton, three. Off iron, it goes down. And you can't go under the screen. And that's what happened that time on defense. They went under, then a late closeout by Dukas. Allowed that shot to fall. So a little push here from the Zags. Dukas, three, way short. He's not been shooting the ball particularly well here lately. And he's coming out of the game after that miss. Well, and the Gonzaga Bulldogs trying to get some momentum. Great job out of the timeout. Drew Timmy loves this play. A little screen, slip it, roll to the rim. And if you stay attached and don't communicate, it's a dunk. And then the late closeout. And the open, uncontested three. I mean, really, it's a late closeout. So you, it's not even factoring in on the shot for Rajir Bolton. This time Bolton couldn't quite get free for the release. He goes down low to Timmy. Oh, that's a charge. That is a charge. That's easy. And that's frustration, right? Like, that is... Drew Timmy does a great job of kind of feeling where the defense is, seeing where the defense is, reading where the help is coming from. And that time, he knows that he can't do that. And it's a microcosm of being out of your rhythm and being a little bit disjointed when you've been in such a flow all season long. 
I mean, who would have ever thought Drew Timmy 0 for 6 has not scored. We're under two minutes to play in the first half. The way he has toyed with St. Mary's in his career. I think you're fair. You, you're, if you take a shot before 10 seconds on the shot clock here, you're, you're a mistake for St. Mary's the rest of the half. You need to keep the pace slow. Another block for Chet Holmgren. Just smothered Kyle Bowen. Timmy, quick move. Still can't find the aim from inside. He's 0 for 7, Drew Timmy, and that was a great look. We showed you some that was like, hey, you know what? Like, this has been great defense. That was one where Timmy's going to make that shot nine times out of ten. Uh, but it's a microcosm of what we see in this entire first half. Gales have led by as many as 15. The lead is down to 10. Mullins, three. Good! What a first half for Mullins. I mean, it's been some uncharacteristic guys coming off the bench making a difference he's Jay, got seven Jay Mullins and Mitchell Saxon have been stars you know sometimes you have your good has to be good so your great can be great and these guys coming off the bench tonight they're just fulfilling their role they're just doing what is asked of them they're not trying to extend themselves and be superhuman Bolton almost flipped it in Timmy on the offensive rebound this is another shot incredible Dave, Gonzaga's been trailing how many times at the half? Twice. And what was the result of both those games? Those were the two games that they've lost this year. The only two times they've trailed at the half. Well, they're going to be trailing at the end of the half here. Shot clock winding down, and Johnson picked up his dribble. Saxon rejected by Holmgren out of bounds with two to shoot. St. Mary's has been more connected. They've played with a little bit more bite, a little bit more edge than Gonzaga has here in the first 20 minutes. There's no doubt about that, Dave. No doubt. That is the third block for Holmgren. Two to shoot. Johnson underneath, and what an inbound play for St. Mary's. Steal in the bucket. What a day in college hoops. Nemhard three too strong. Kuzi from beyond midcourt. No, that's about the only thing that didn't go right for St. Mary's in the first half. Well, the Sags will walk to a locker room with a feeling that they have not felt in quite some time. Drew Timmy shaking all their hands. Tell them, let's go. 20 more minutes. But out of bounds, exit. In the second half, you know that we're going to get everyone's best when we step out onto the floor. And the coaching staff's message to the locker room to them in the locker room was we need to stick together. This is the biggest adversity we've seen all season. This is good for you guys. This is where you show us what you're made of. St. Mary's gets the ball to start the second half. And it will be fascinating to see how both teams handle this situation. Logan Johnson had it stripped away, scramble for the loose ball, and Gonzaga gets a stop to start the half. Bolton, transition three, good! Uh, poor communication that time. Detail-oriented orient, defense is awesome in the first 20 minutes. But that first possession, you, you cannot leave the ball and leave Rashir Bolton wide open in transition from three. We've already seen that a couple of times tonight. 20 minutes is an eternity against the Zags. Bowen, corner three, not even close. There is no doubt that the Gonzaga Bulldogs are going to make a run in this game. That run might be starting right now. Nemhard, though, in and out. They're going to call a foul. Timmy had good position, so the foul's going to be against St. Mary's. Uh, a hold on Tommy Cousy. But, Dave, there's a couple things that I thought about when we were going to the half. Is one is, is like what Molly just said, is, is how will this team respond? Gonzaga hasn't been here. The, the WCC has had a sensational year. And tonight's another example of the depth of this conference. These are the two top teams, and they're playing like it. But for St. Mary's, it's equally important to understand that this game didn't end at halftime. And everything you did in the first half, you need to ramp up again because this Gonzaga team is going to come out on fire. Bolton attacks and scores. Roger Bolton, great start to the second half. Now five quick points. 
for number 45. So the lead immediately down to 10 after just a minute or so. Alex Dukas did not play his best in the first half. Shot clock winding down. Kuzi with the shot blocker in his face. Oh my Scores anyway. How about the touch on that shot? To loft that over Chet Holmgren? Are you kidding me? Not many have been able to do that. Holmgren makes his move. Good defense by Bowen. And then Holmgren goes over the back and commits a foul. Kyle Bowen is one of the better individual defenders in this league and maybe in any league. He's big guy. He's rangy. He can move. He's good. He's been very disruptive. Again, look, pace of play is a problem, right? You're playing against a slow pace, methodical place, deliberate, whatever you want to call it against St. Mary's. You got to try to speed them up a little bit. And Gonzaga utilizes that pressure, try to get deflections, and then force them to play a little faster than they want in the half court. Johnson on the move. Logan Johnson trying to bully his way in. He misses the shot. Bowen offensive rebound. Kuzi, <laughs> not that time. <laughs> Smart decision that time by Tommy Kuzi. Matthias Toss goes right at the big man with the foul. What an answer by St. Mary's because start of this second half, you get five points in a row for Bolton and the Gonzaga Bulldogs, and then you find your answer at the other end of the floor right away. And Toss, what he did so well there, you see Chet lunged just ever so slightly. That lunge forced him to play from behind on Toss. And Toss has got that thickness and that shoulder strength to create an angle and score. The one-two punch of St. Mary's big men with Toss and Mitchell Saxon tonight outplaying Drew Timmy and Chet Holmgren, which is kind of impossible to believe that they're doing it. More good defense. This time, Timmy, the passer, found Bolton, who will be shooting free throws. Drew Timmy still has not scored. He's 0 for 8. Doesn't have a point. But a good decision there and sets up his teammate who's got a chance for a couple points at the free throw line. And Bolton's been great. I mean, he's the guy that's come out of the locker room ready to go right from start now for Gonzaga. And I think you ride the hot hand. First free throw goes down tomorrow. We've got a Sunday doubleheader for you in the American 1230 Eastern. You got top 15 Houston against SMU. They lost SMU earlier this year. Then Wichita State and Memphis. Both games on ESPN and will stream on the app. We mentioned it's six teams in college basketball that are inside the top 10 lost today all of them on the road there's never been seven teams to lose in one single day turnover Demhard the other way Demhard no tip up good Julian Strother and he hit the floor hard Logan Johnson's shoe came off So if St. Mary's were to pull the upset, just to finish your thought, this would be an historic day. Never happened in the history of college hoops if St. Mary's gets it done. Toss versus Timmy. Toss. No. Holmgren. Nice rebound. Here's Bolton. Holmgren. Catch and shoot three. Short. He's a great three-point shooter. Yeah. That is, the thing is, too, when, when Gonzaga's not making shots, right, it allows the pace to really be played at St. Mary's speed. When they make ba baskets, it allows them to extend out their defense and become a little bit more disruptive to St. Mary's. Emhart's hounding Tommy Cousy, who had to work just to get the ball. Extra pass. Duke is three. Go! Unselfish basketball is great basketball and when you have a team willing to make that extra pass great things usually happen That was a beautiful offensive possession Biggest lead has been 15. It's 14 right now Demhard from Timmy Missed it Feels like the Gales have sort of weathered that early push out of the locker room Kuzi that had nowhere to go not a good shot selection that time by Tommy Cousy. 
Holmgren back door to Bolton, and Bolton slipped. Kuzi disrupted it. That looked like it was going to be a layup. And everybody puts the stop sign up for St. Mary's. Toss, scores. If this is the first time you watch these two teams play all season long, you would think that St. Mary's and their offensive efficiency numbers would just be just off the charts. I mean, they're the one that are playing with flow and rhythm right now. Total role reversal tonight. There is the first basket for the great Drew Timmy, his first two points of the game. The ball movement has been sensational for St. Mary's. Kuzi finds Toss wide open, and then Holmgren came from nowhere to swat it away. Now Strother, offensive foul. He just knocked Kyle Bowen down. Well, ball movement, spacing, patience, and poise. We've seen all of that so far. The art of the upset. Could we be seeing it here in Moraga? Thanks a lot. Six. 32. I, mean, I, I think those numbers, Sean, tell the story pretty well. Since 2015 2016 against the WCC, everybody else, Gonzaga's 108 and 3. Look at the point differential. Uh, and then just the number of ranked matchups. Look, Randy Bennett has built a great program here. When he took over this program in Moraga, they were at the bottom of the barrel in the West Coast Conference. And the administration here was patient. They, they funded the basketball program appropriately. They allowed him to bring in some excellent coaches. His coaching tree has been sensational. He developed the Aussie pipeline. And he, he's now gotten a bunch of really just solid players. I mean, think about this. You and I were talking about the bunch of lottery picks for Gonzaga. There hasn't been a first round pick. Not one. Under Randy Bennett. A change of call, by the way, Randy Bennett. That makes him happy. St. Mary's will keep it. I mean, it is a good perspective. And this is not to say Mark Few is not a great coach, because he is. Here's the, the play in dispute. Uh, Definitely went off yeah. through Timmy. So they got it right. But they, I mean, look, they, they've had great players develop while they've been here. Patty Mills, Matthew Della Vadova. Johnson. Johnson. Oh, and dunks right on top of Drew Timmy. Whoa! Logan Johnson! Timmy, the answer, not quite as spectacular, but it counts the same. Oh my, my goodness. Can we get a stoppage in play? I just want to look at it again, please. Uh, <laughs> America wants to see that again. Uh, you'll see it on Sports Center tonight. Great athlete, Logan Johnson. This time bounces it to his teammate, and Thomas lays it in. Uh, they're just trading buckets. Gonzaga's got to lock in at the defensive end of the floor. You've got to get some stops and sustain them. You're down 16. Mary's offense has been brilliant. Nemhard, no on the three long rebound. Kuzi. The points in the bank continues that incredible differential. There's 20 points in the plus column for St. Mary's. Salas the other way. Hunter Salas rejected by Johnson, who's flying all over the gym. Toss. Timmy blocks him. Tosh goes behind the back and threw it away. Well, that was a careless pass. Drew Timmy all the way. Timmy draws a foul. The headband came off. Well, Logan Johnson has put on a show here for all of us. In fact, at shoot around, we said, hey, you got a haircut. Might make you more aerodynamic after you missed the dunk against BYU. That was electric to see him at that end of the floor elevate up and finish in the paint. Drew Timmy just ducked out of the way and said, I'm not getting dunked on today. That was awesome. And on the defensive end, almost as spectacular. Uh, help side rotation just flying in to make the play. Timmy makes the first of two. And still a long way to go. Toss is going to come out. Mitchell Saxon will come in. Let me tell you why Mitchell Saxon's play has been so important. In Spokane, Toss got fatigued late in that game and missed a couple of shots. 
that he characteristically makes and it would have tightened things up and made it at least a little bit more interesting up there but because Saxon's played well you can afford to put him on the bench and keep him fresh yeah Toss has only played 14 minutes tonight Owen tried to feed Saxon Watson flings it up loose ball Dukas comes away with it that time on the shot clock you don't need to rush it and I, I think they're going to talk about that and they're, what they're trying to determine is do they call it possession if he caught the ball had two hands on it and makes a play back and that's what Randy Bennett's saying is hey if he has both hands on the ball able to control it and throw it towards his direction of the basket then you do have to reset it at 20. Have a point off the bench. St. Mary's gotten great production from their reserves. Uh, they did reset the shot clock full possession. The 26 now on the shot clock for the Gales coming out of that break. Well, there's a fine line, isn't there, when you're in this position? You don't want to get away from what got you here. Ooh. Bowen came up way short. But working the clock would be part of the strategy for St. Mary's being deliberate. Well, and, and defensive transition key, right? I mean, what's, what's astounding is they've actually gotten offensive rebounds and second chance points. They're plus five there is St. Mary's because usually they just send everybody back to make sure that Gonzaga can't score in transition. Emhard, nice little pull up jumper for him. The lead is 12. Still plus 20 in the paint for St. Mary's. Johnson, who's not a big guy, but he loves to score in the paint. That time he had the ball knocked away. Lost it on the way up. Saxon did a great job meeting Drew Timmy up the line, not allowing him to get his deep post position. They're going to get him with a foul, but a great job meeting him and not allowing him to get deep. Yeah, good point. Let's go over to Molly. Well, Dave, in that Zags timeout, players looked kind of shocked at what's going on here in this game. But the coaching staff was encouraging, trying to calm them down, saying, hey, there's a lot of time left. Keep chipping away at this possession by possession. He said, they said, you guys are shooting threes, but no one is on the offensive glass. We want more aggression in everything that you're doing. But they want to focus on rebounding first to get back into this game. Thank you, Molly. Holmgren back in. Bolton for three in and out. That one almost went down. Well, like Molly's point, I mean, Dave, you and I were talking about as well, is it, it, it's it's 11 minutes almost left in this game. I and mean, we've seen Gonzaga go on a 12-0 run over a minute and 38 seconds. And that was just when Chet Holmgren was playing against San Diego. I mean, they, they are explosive. And so if you're St. Mary's, you have to be as dialed in as you've been all night long. Bowen's going to try another three. He's been short on basically all of them. I, I, I would put that one away. He is 0 for 4 from deep. And some of them have not been close. Bolton down the lane. He's working hard on defense, Kyle Bowen. Hickman. And now Timmy. That's a three second violation. Never got out of the lane. Whew. I think Drew Timmy threw the ball at the official and it hit him in the head. And he threw it. Like, he didn't mean to do it through it, like, with a lot and, of air and, under it. He didn't. And, he, it right. and he walked over and was like, my fault. <laughs> Not the way to endear yourself, though, even if it was an accident. And St. Mary's offense has slowed down here the last few possessions. Tommy Cousy, defender, fell down. He tried to use the backboard. Holmgren got fouled by Cousy. That's just a little tough on that shot, a little bit too much. Tommy Cousy had 10 points early in this one. He's got 12 right now. Gonzaga's done a better job against him. With under 10 minutes to go, number one on the ropes. If they go down, It'll be a record-breaking day in college basketball. Gonzaga would be the seventh top ten team to lose today. We've talked about it all season long. There's been a there's a lot of really good teams in college basketball. You think about eight teams that could maybe win a national championship. Clearly, Gonzaga is one of those. Clearly, Arizona is one of. I mean, almost everybody that lost today is one of those eight teams. 
But it's also one of those years where in certain matchups and certain games and certain seasons, you wouldn't be surprised if they lost in the Sweet 16. This is the biggest Zags run of the game. Six nothing. Not by their standards, not much of a run at all. Kuzi against Holmgren. Shot clock under 10. Here's Toss down low. Got to get a shot off. Toss will get it up. No. Timmy rebound. Great defense of transition by St. Mary's. They just are back and playing with numbers, cutting off the ball handlers. Travel. Turnover's been an issue. 11 of them already for the Zags. Randy Bennett told his team today at, at shoot around biggest theme composure next play whether we're up whether we're down whether they make a run we've got to get to the next play I mean they're leaving Kyle Bowen wide open there's and he's, a reason he's got to stop shooting there's a reason why he's wide open and, and he has to understand that he's doing great at the defensive end of the floor but they're baiting him and wanting him to take that shot it's good strategy Timmy down low home grin no loose ball Dukas snatches it In all of WCC play, Gonzaga failed to lead for just 20 minutes. They have not led for one minute in tonight's game. And the three from Dukas pushes the lead back to 13 and forces another timeout for Mark View and Gonzaga. Now, the point still remains. There's plenty of time left for a team as explosive as Gonzaga. But we're under eight minutes. The lead is still 13. Oh, well, they've only whittled away two points off of what was that 15-point halftime lead, Dave. Holmgren in, Timmy out. Chad Holmgren spins and scores. What a beautiful move. First half on that spin move, they were able to shoot the gap and have a guard come in and pinch in and deflect that away. But because it was toss and there was big on big on that side, he's not as comfortable of making that rotation. You also have Bowen now out of the game, so you lose his defense. Dan Fotu in for St. Mary's. Here's Toss on this end, going right at Holmgren. Toss over the top. Again, fresh because of Saxon. It's a late game point. situation. He's going to have more left in the tank than he did in Spokane. That's a great point. He was out of gas at the end of the game at the kennel. Nemhard used a pass fake and the defense just left him wide open. Yeah, miscommunication that time between Toss and Logan Johnson. Nemhard settles himself on two. Great composure. Defense steps away. That's a free clean look. Nemhard's got 13, although he's needed 15 shots to get there. Kuzi tried to wrap it around to Toss, and that's a St. Mary's turnover. They've been a little looser with the ball here in the last few minutes. Bolton. Gets it back. Tries to go by. Kuzi scores with a foul. Bolton seems to be the guy. He's trying to be the player to lead Gonzaga back. Uh, he's got 15, and he's going to be at the free throw line. They're looking for a spark right now. And it's not often that we sit there and say Gonzaga needs a spark. Bolton has been the guy in the second half to do it. Someone else has got to join him down the stretch of this one. Up of all of that, he also has a 4.0 GPA. So uh, just an all-around great kid, and he's been huge for the Zags in the second half, David Sean. Thank you, Molly. First time since the first half, and Bolton's a big reason why, that the lead is down to single digits. He completes the three-point play. We got six-plus to go in Moraga. Dale's trying to pull off the upset. It is not going to be easy. No, they got to value the basketball. And if Fotu back on the bench, Bowen is back out offensively. They're going to leave him wide open from beyond the arc. Kuzi, good off the glass. That was a much better, more composed offensive possession for Tommy Kuzi. He's had some turnover issues here tonight, Dave. He's got five turnovers. Big number for him, considering the way he's been playing lately. Holmgren, good defense to cut him off. Strother, long three, good! 
He's going under screens on Julian Strother. That's a bad idea. Now the lead is seven with five and a half to go. This is going to be a fantastic finish. Going to come right down to the end. Despite the fact that Gonzaga has never led St. Mary's. Has led by as many as 16. Toss once again against Holmgren. This time gave it up. The shot clock has been stuck at 15. Yeah, that, that possession went on for a long time and Mark Fuse going, now oh, wait a minute. And they're going to have to look at this and make some adjustments. Yeah. And seven rebounds, uh, seven assists today. And Jalen Williams is a pro and we saw them knock off BYU at home. That Santa Clara team's really good too. I mean, this is this is the best this league has ever been and they're showcasing it tonight with the two top teams on this floor. Coming down to the final five minutes, Nemhard. With Drew Timmy on the bench, he has struggled tonight. Nemhard's been big, crossover three, no. Kuzi with the rebound. And Randy Bennett just says, slow it down, slow it down. I mean, they, they want to make this thing an absolute meat grinder down the stretch. Almost stolen away by Strother. This time he gets called for reach. And Drew Timmy will check back into this game. Yeah, I mean, as much as he has struggled, he's your guy. Yep. So you trust the All American. Timmy will come back in for the final 435, 2 of 10 shooting. To the road to Champ Week. The Champ Week feels like it's already begun. I mean, this is just phenomenal. Logan Johnson, good defense by Bolton, switched to his offhand and missed the shot badly. Wild. That was a wild contested look. Those aren't the clean looks they were getting earlier in this half and in the first half in particular. Bolton to Timmy and Johnson did a great job to get his hand in the passing lane. I thought Bolton should have shot that ball. Uh, St. Mary's doesn't have a shot blocker out on the floor right now. Toss is not a shot blocker. Bones not a shot blocker. Because you get in there, jump off a two, be solid, and finish. Can the Gales finish tonight a game that they have controlled the whole way? Bowen's going to try another one. And he finally hits it. Huge. <laughs> He's been 0 for 7. That takes the lead back to 10, Dave. Strother, the answer. I mean, that's the kind of shot when Bowen hits that that makes you think tonight's going to be the night for the Gales. We'll see. Far from over. Strother's played a quietly good game. There's Toss down low. Shot clock is winding off. Behind the back, he tried it again. That's the second time he's done it. And both times it's been a turnover. I mean, just value the basketball. Understand time, possession, where you're at. Make sure you get a good look. M. Hard created some space. Missed it. Holmgren followed in go. Under three to play. Mark Few gets down in his stance. He needs to stop. Listen to this old Jim. Kuzi, three, short. Holmgren challenged, and that will be a shot clock violation and a St. Mary's turnover. 222 to go. Number one is down eight in the regular season finale in the WCC. EFPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball. Number three right now in the Kevin Connors top ten mid-major. I think they might move up if they get this one. I believe so too. But the Zags have the ball. You get a stop right here. It's gonna make it tough because they're gonna be possession by possession all the way. That's a good foul going to send them to the free throw line. That's a smart, smart play by Andrew Nemhard to attack that way. It'll be one on one. Yeah, so Andrew Nemhard, who had a streak going earlier this year, made free throws. That streak has ended, but Nemhard has been outstanding at the free throw line. Two very big ones here.
He earns the second. Final big Monday doubleheader of the regular season comes up in a couple days. Syracuse and Carolina in Chapel Hill at 7 Eastern. And then in the Big 12, number 10 Baylor. They'll be moving up against number 20 Texas. Both games on ESPN and the app. Now he throws good. Six-point lead. And all it comes down to is you got to sustain stops. You cannot allow them to score. And look, they, they're going to waste every possession. I mean, every ounce of this shot clock. So what you want them to do is hopefully have to take a contested perimeter shot and not allow them a clean look. Wide open, Kyle. Boom! Hits another one. Dave, that's the game. That's the game. Two threes down the stretch from Bowen, who couldn't hit the rim early in the game. Strother foul. I mean, all night long, I've been saying, don't, don't shoot it. Don't shoot it anymore. Shooter's got to shoot. And in Kyle Bowen's mind, he's a shooter. And he's hit his last two. And those two have been huge for St. Mary's and Randy Bennett's team. Uh, I was with you. This has uh, been a wild day of college basketball. Get ready for March. Get ready for Champ Week. Get ready for the next 15 days. It's going to be fun. I mean, it's so fun when you have a season where anything can happen. <laughs> and that's the season we have. Strother makes it first. We'll see what Mark Few decides to do. He missed the second with the Zags foul. Logan Johnson, not a bad guy to foul. The other thing, too, you think about this for St. Mary's. What does the wind do if they're able to pull this off, Dave? It, it moves him up some seed lines. Joel Lenardi's going to be working late tonight. Johnson layup. No, he missed it. Uncontested. Maybe some life for the Zags. Swatted away by Toss. What a great defensive rotation that time by Toss to slide on over to block that shot. It's about to get crazy in here. They can sense it, that's for sure. They took our lead, and if Logan Johnson does get the ball, that is who I would want to foul right now if I'm Mark Few. And try to send him to the free throw line. You've got to elongate this game. Strother, tough three, no. Johnson rebound. And he gets fouled. Not in the one-on-one. -on -one. They still have fouls to give. Which means more time potentially off the clock. You've got to be really strong with the ball right now because Gonzaga's going to come and they're going to look to rip and strip it right away. I foul him. Foul him right now. Yeah, I would too. They steal it away instead. And Strother lays it in. That gives the Zags some hope. That's the best case scenario for St. Mary's right there. They, if, I mean, for, the, for Gonzaga. Now, Dukas gets fouled. Dave, uh, if you're St. Mary's, you've got to value the ball better than that. Uh, he, I just said they're going to come and rip. I'm sure Randy Bennett's telling his team as well, you've got to be able to pivot, be strong with the ball, know exactly what you want. When you're lazy with it, against length in particular and that's why Julian Strother is up there. He's got great length great athleticism to deflect that pass 51.3 seconds on the clock and they're not fouling. They're gonna foul him and Mark Hughes telling him I, mean, I, I don't know how you can let seconds tick off just let the 16 seconds tick off and you're fine They won't have to take another shot. No. Toss. He will shoot it. Came up short. Under 30. Game's not over. Strother. And he commits the offensive foul. Kyle Bowen. I just... Put himself in position and look, 
For St. Mary's, this is huge, Dave. I mean, you talk about their resume was already complete for the NCAA tournament. Uh, but you talk about the development of this program and the energy level that we're going to take with us to Las Vegas for the West Coast Conference Tournament. It's going to be wild. Spokane South is going to be traveling in soon. Zags fans will be there. BYU fans will be there. The St. Mary's fans are going to be there, too. Not in the same kind of numbers, but this is a really good Gales team that's and playing its best basketball. St. Mary's is good enough to win and advance in the NCAA tournament. And our quarters that we're standing in is getting tighter and tighter by the second. I, I don't know where you and I are going to go, but... We'll figure it out. We are not in a good spot, but I'm excited. It's for fun. It. This is what college basketball is about. We missed all of this last year. The students and the celebration of when your team competes and plays as hard. Wow, a whistle and a foul. Gonzaga thought they stole it away. So many great scenes around college basketball season long. Logan Johnson, a little too careless. You're dribbling to nowhere. You're dribbling to the end line underneath your opponent's basket. You're putting yourself in trouble. He got bailed out a little bit on that one. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Six point lead. One and one free throws for Logan Johnson. The students are already on the floor. They, they are on the court. They're literally in front of our table already. First free throw. Good. Now we're finished. Stand and deal. Standing by. Sports Center. All the college hoops news in the NBA. The baseball news. All they're gonna be talking about is upsets in college basketball today. One through six, all losing on the road. Seven teams for the first time in college basketball history in the top ten. Fall in the same day. Get them, push them back. They cannot be in the position they're in right now. And administration is coming over, telling them they got to get back. Yeah. I mean, you can't be on the court while the game's going on. <laughs> so, we can celebrate in a few seconds. Strother, short. Gales have it. Mark waves them off. There's no foul. Mark, actually, Chet Holmgren just fouled him, even though Mark Few was asking him not to foul. Look, Gonzaga has now trailed three times this season at the break. And they have lost all three games. This is what you love about college hoops. Rivalry games, students out of their minds. And a win that they're going to remember here forever. I can't see the court. They made the free throw, Dave. <laughs> you have a sign of a giraffe in front of your head. I can't see. We're, we're in the middle of all this. <laughs> uh, I got a I got a plastic giraffe and a huge Kanye West sign Kanye in front of your West. face. And they're pulling out the seniors right now. Tommy Cousy, what a great story. A walk-on that will leave here as one of the more decorated players. In program history, his heart, his resiliency, earned his scholarship after a couple of years. And Randy Bennett going to sub out his seniors one by one to celebrate this moment, hugging them. He said he didn't want to talk about what they meant to the program before the game. He just wanted to be in the moment. I think he'll be talking about what they meant after this one. Final seconds are going to tick off the clock here. Strother. That one's going to ricochet out of bounds. What a night for the Gales. We got stuff being thrown on the floor. This thing's over. Back down, down the hatch with the Moraga. Holy smoke! Our broadcast table is out on the court right now. Oh my goodness. What a win for the Gales. They take down number one on an historic night.
in college.